Hey everybody, we all know that shipping CRTs can really be a disaster most of the time and that's why I am super excited to show you my first experience with the company U-Ship. Now this is not a sponsored video or anything. This was just a actual experience I had as a client of mine from a different part of the United States needed to ship this, a Sony PVM20L5 to me to have it serviced and checked out. The problem is, is I will no longer let anybody just pack this type of a monitor in a cardboard box and send it to me via FedEx or UPS or really any other ground shipping company. Uh, I've had a high failure rate and I've had plenty of people send me terrible pictures and videos of their uh, PVMs and monitors being destroyed, especially larger ones like this one that have a 19 inch tube in them. Uh, just because of poor packing or even if the packing is really well done, there's still a chance that in the shipping process it rolls around and gets heavily damaged. So what I want to show you today is again my experience with the company U-Ship and this is a basically broker website that connects people that need things shipped that are fragile or odd or really uh, invaluable. They need those shipped and you can try to hire somebody through this U-Ship firm where they go out and connect uh, licensed, insured, and uh, professional driving companies to pick up your item and then ship it to wherever you need to be shipped. So uh, let's just look now. I'll show you how this was packed when it got to me because it was awesome. And I do think that this is something that everybody who has ever considered shipping a CRT should consider from this point on. All right, folks, I'm sorry, first off, about the audio quality here today, but what I've got for you is a professionally boxed CRT that's on a pallet or a mini pallet, and then it's been shipped through U-Ship in a small distribution shipping chain, which is just a small business that actually just sent me this. Um, this did come from uh, Texas or Arizona, I believe. I cannot remember the exact location, but... First off, this is a nice plywood box from Uline. I'm sure this was probably pretty pricey. Should be easy to pack back up and return ship. Well, it looks like we've got an L-series monitor down in here. So it's got a nice dent on the side, but I'm not thinking that probably didn't happen from this. Okay, let's get it out. Just bottom of the box. Now here's the bubble wrap in the plywood there. An initial inspection here we're definitely missing the power button now, I might actually have one of these assemblies inside my shop that I can offer and then there's a big what looks like impact point right here so I'm not sure what happened there I'll have to speak with the owner and see there's some damage over here there's some more damage down here so let's get it up and we'll take a better look at it all right, let's take a closer look at the monitor now that we have it up. It's obviously a 20L5, and just initial inspection of the left-hand side over here. It all looks fine. There's this tiny ding just right there on the bezel. And if we keep going over here to the right-hand side, you'll see where there is. I don't even see an assembly in there for the button. The entire arm may be gone. So that's not there the rest of the bezel seems to be intact and the screws actually look pretty straight in over here we're missing a screw down here to hold this corner see so that's not there screw right here that again is not flush so I wanted to see what's going on under there it's got the screw down there, got the rest of the screws on the shell, but again, here's a big ding. Check that out. 
something hit the side here hopefully it avoided the boards behind there back here we've got some more what looks to be body damage you see that bubbliness right there so we've got this corner right here it looks like it's part of when it took that impact over here on the side and somehow damaged the plastic here and again i do not believe this had anything to do with the shipping we just did because there was no evidence of any kind of markings on the box or anything. This all seems to be... Got a funky looking input card slot because that's just the slot door minus the actual input card. So I just took the slot off the actual card there, the SDI card, and got rid of the card but kept the covering to cover up the slot bay. And this one is from January of 2003, so definitely not the oldest version. You know, I've got the monitor down here with RGBS connected and it is powered on you can probably hear the very annoying noises coming from it we've got the Sega Genesis here running RGB SCART it is triple bypassed modded and got the 240p test suite on screen and you did like I said notice there's some transformers or maybe capacitors over in here that are making some noise uh, on this deflection block, just listen to this. Now this tube is going to be susceptible to magnetism. Check this out. Do you see how I turned that? We've got complete discoloration on this end. Here on this end, we've got red showing up. So there's definitely a purity issue with this monitor. Now this this is something that does happen with this 20L5 more than others. But you see how I turn the screen. Well, as you can tell, we've got a lot of things going on with this Sony PVM. It has, has a number of issues cosmetically that's wrong with it and also functionally. First off, obviously it still needs a power button, which can be replaced and then the back shell casing still has damage to it and it can be replaced but there's also some stuff going on internally so we're going to need to at least do save on pets uh, recap and repair kit to this one and it may even need more work than that because i have a feeling that there's a lot of hours on this monitor and that uh, it's not probably been serviced. It's also looked like, again, it's been beat up a little bit. So that's it for that. But what I wanted to finish out this video talking about is this box from Uline. And it may be something that you do really consider using because again, you ship, they did a great job of just moving this basically onto a trailer, a covered enclosed trailer. And then the delivery driver just moved it over here to my shop. And that's really all that it did. It was strapped against the trailer, so it did not move. But it was that uh, fully enclosed wooden box. Now, something you, you should know are the dimensions of this box, the inside of the box, uh, and the workable area you have. So the important dimensions on this box are the length and width. And the length is 23 and 1 8 inch, and then it's 19 and a half inches wide. The 19 and a half inch wide is fine for most 20 inch CRT monitors. For example, this one, it's about 17 inches wide. And even the big BVMs that are 20 inches are 17 and a half inches wide. The trouble you're gonna run into is the other dimension, which is 23 and a little bit over that an eighth inch uh, long. And an actual BVM that is loaded with cards is gonna be right at 23 inches. Now you can remove the cards and cut down about an inch or two off the back end of the BVM if you wanted to use this box for a BVM. And I think that's the method that you should do. You should remove all those cards that are making it bigger. And that includes like the power supply, anything with a big heat sink on it. Remove those, individually wrap them, and then place them on top of the monitor because you have enough space vertically inside there to pack really anything you need. The only issue, again, are the side packings. And that may, you could use this uh, Uline package to ship your monitor. It's available and it costs about $100 for each one of these. And uh, you could definitely use it multiple times. I think that it's a great way to go if you're gonna ship any PVM um, using any kind of shipping method. You should do something really heavy duty like this uh, box at this point. Thanks again for watching everybody. I'll see you all next time with some more retro content.